Jay, what is it like to be in the dump truck business? You don't have to actually invest money. You don't need to actually own any trucks. What does that mean? They're losing money. I'm the one establishing the rate. Hey, can I deliver you lunch or can I bring you lunch? I treat these guys like they're a good friend. This is Jay Mancini. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we keep the wheels rolling and the cash flowing. So I get asked all the time, Jay, what is it like to be in the dump truck business? What is it like to be a broker? So today guys, our video, the pros and cons of being a dump truck broker. So let's start with the pros. So pro number one guys, you don't have to actually invest money in purchasing a dump truck or dump trucks. Instead, you can use that money to fund your dump truck brokerage business and I'll explain. As a dump truck broker, the one thing that you will have to have is some type of initial investment. Why? Well, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna hire other owner operators, so you will need money to cover the payroll for those owner operators. Well, in this case, instead of spending 40, 50, 60, 80, could be 100, or even two to $300,000 in a dump truck, you can utilize the same money to actually fund the payroll for you as a dump truck broker. So why do you need this money? Stick around and I'll explain to you in the cons. So pro number one leads to the following. Pro number two, you don't need to actually own any trucks. So we talked about how you don't need the money to purchase trucks, meaning you don't need to actually own any trucks. Now, here's the pro. If you don't own any trucks, guys, you don't have to deal with the drivers, the maintenance, the repairs, and several of the other issues that come along with you actually owning trucks. One of the examples I can give you as far as dealing with drivers in this case, right? And not having to worry about it if you don't own any dump trucks. Well, in the last few years, guys, there's been a major shortage of CDL drivers, okay? What does this mean? The following. I've seen guys that own trucks and they have these trucks, not to mention they still owe money on the trucks, meaning they have notes that they have to pay, but guess what? They don't have any drivers for the trucks, but they're still making the monthly payments. What does that mean? They're losing money, right? So in this case, you wouldn't have to worry about that, right? And I'll give you an example, okay? Some of these guys that had this issue, they're having to hire guys that are either new, meaning they just got their CDL, but guess what? There's another issue to that, okay? And I'm being very transparent. The following issue occurs. They hire the guy, the guy has a new CDL, they call their insurance company, and next thing you know, the insurance company says, oh, sorry, we can't add him as a driver. Why? He doesn't have sufficient experience. Or we will add him, but guess what? You're about to pay double, triple, or four times more for coverage than you normally would with a driver who has experience. Pro number three, guys. As a broker, you probably know this by now, if you're in the dump truck business, and if you're new, guys, as a broker, yes, there's a big benefit. You get to deal directly with the contractors or the companies doing the construction work. What does this mean, guys? The following, okay? If I'm working for a general contractor, guess what? I'm dealing directly with them. I'm the one establishing the rate, meaning the pay rate of what? the owner operator will get paid. Why? Because I'm the one as a broker dealing directly with the general contractor. Then in return, once I get a hold of the work, or in this case, a job, I actually call the owner operators and offer them the work. But of course, we have to make our commission and in return as an owner operator, you will probably make a little less. Why? Because we're doing what we call the legwork and actually finding work for the owner operators. Also, by dealing directly with the contractor or general contractor, I'm able to provide multiple trucks, meaning the following. If I was an owner operator and I only own one truck or maybe two or even three trucks, that's all I can probably do, just provide one, two or three trucks. But in this case, as a broker, if the general contractor says, hey, Jay, we need 10 trucks on the job, guess what? That's what we're gonna do, because that's what we get paid to do. We get paid to provide multiple trucks, not only in one job, 
but it could be in two jobs, three jobs, four jobs, and even five and even more. We've had different scenarios where we may run 10 different jobs in one day, and there may be multiple trucks in every different job. So as a broker, you get to have that leverage of being able to have several different trucks in several different jobs. Now guys, I'll be clear. I'm not saying not to own any trucks, but stick around to the end and I'll tell you my personal situation and what I suggest and what I think is the best balance. And now guys, we're going to the cons of being a broker in the dump truck business. Number one guys, it can take time to actually build relationships with contractors or companies that will need dump truck services. And what do I mean? I mean the following, okay? When I first started, it wasn't like, hey, right away, they were calling me, Jay, we need trucks right now. Now, to be very clear with you guys, it took some time, right? What does that mean? That means that, you know, you have to pave the way. You have to actually put in some work to establish those relationships and connections so later on down the road, you can actually supply these contractors with the trucking services that they need. So one way that I was able to build relationships with contractors or general contractors was the following way. Of course, I would go and I would meet these people, whether it's at job sites or at their business location. And you know, I would leave them my business card, but I would like to go what I call the extra mile. Not only would I leave them a business card, but I would also make a quick agenda and follow up with them. Meaning, if I spoke to the individual today, I would write an agenda down and make sure I followed up with him, let's say a week or 10 days or two weeks from the day that I actually met the individual. And then one thing that I would also do is try to remember something in that conversation. So the next time I call that individual, I kind of already have an engagement going on with him and I've started to develop that relationship right off the bat. Now, another suggestion that I also would make is just something very small, like, hey, can I uh, deliver you lunch or can I bring you lunch? And I know that maybe for some of you like, man, that's really going out of the way. But guys, let me explain to you. When you're new in the business, those little things will take you a long way. And that, guys, takes me to con number two. Talking about relationships, it can also take some time to build relationships with owner operators. And of course, that is just as crucial. Why? Because not only do you have to build relationships with the people that will give you the work, the general contractors or contractors, but also the guys that are going to be working for you or with you, the owner operators. Now, when you're new to the business, owner operators might not know who you are. So again, it's going to take some time to build and establish those relationships, but I highly recommend be very straightforward, be very transparent, and of course, try to do what's best by not only the contractor, but also the owner operator. So one way that I've been able to develop good relationships with the owner operators that work with us is the following way. Okay. I keep it very, very simple with the guys. What I mean by that is I'm very transparent with them. I'm very upfront and I actually try to develop a friendship with them. Okay. I treat these guys like they're a good friend, which most of them are. And I'm just very upfront with them. Okay. I talk to them about their family. I try to keep it, you know, to a certain extent personal and actually develop that personal relationship. Cause at the end of the day, guys, that's what you're in business for to develop the relationship. So not only you can develop a relationship so they can go and help you whenever you need their help, but most importantly, so that you can create that long-term relationship. So down the road, when you do build your business, these guys will come and work for you before they work for anyone else. And why it's so important to develop a relationship with the owner operators that will be working with you is the following guys. I've had a lot of scenarios where at the end of the day, there's a lot of people out there looking for work and there's a lot of brokers and they'll come to me and they'll say, Hey Jay, I just got a phone call from so-and-so he's asking me if I can go work for him on this particular job. But you know, us having a good relationship, guess what? Even if the other person or the other broker is paying them the same as we are, they will rather stay and work with us. Why? Because we've been able to develop that long-term relationship. Con number three, guys. So guys, remember the pro where I said, you don't need money if you're not actually buying a truck? Well, 
I did mention also there was a con. You would need some money for your broker business, right? And here's what I mean by that, okay? As a broker, you have to have some initial investment, okay? So that when it's time to pay the owner operators, you have the funds available to pay these guys. Why? Most of these guys are actually going to be paid on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Now, depending on where you're at, things could be a little different, but here, where we're located, it's either weekly or bi-weekly. And in most cases, guys, it's actually on a weekly basis. So whenever you're a broker, most of the companies or contractors you're gonna be dealing with, very, very likely, they're gonna be paying you on a, what's called a net 30, which means in 30 days. So if today's the first of the month and we do work today, you're probably not gonna get paid till the following first of the month, meaning 30 days from the day you did the work. So yes, you will need some initial investment. Now I'll give you another example. Sometimes you may only have three or four trucks on a job, so your investment might not be significant. But if you hit the road, what I call the road running, right? And you all of a sudden are in a job that requires, let's just say 10 trucks. Well, guess what? That investment will be more significant. Not to mention if you got two or three jobs running with you know multiple trucks in each job, and let's just say adds up to 20 or 30 trucks, then we're talking about a significant amount of capital. But again, going to what we were saying, when you start off, right? It's all up to how you start off. You can start off with a few trucks, but eventually you will need the capital as you start to develop and actually grow your business where you eventually have 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 trucks on the road. Another example I can give you, and this is a scenario that happened to us not too long ago. We actually had a job where we were running day and night, meaning there was trucks during the day and there was trucks during the night. 24 hours so we had 25 trucks running in the day and then 25 trucks running during the night so 7 a.m 7 p.m and then 7 p.m we would have the night shift come in and they would run until 7 a.m so it was a 24 hour shift and it was for several months non-stop so you could imagine what kind of payroll you would have in a situation like this now of course we've been in the business for a while now so that might not be the case right off the start but i'm just kind of painting a picture for you guys now guys from my personal experience this is what i suggest and this is what i've done that's worked for us now yes we still do own trucks as a broker we're not in the business to own a bunch of trucks but i do recommend owning at least one truck and here's the reason why when you become a broker and you're in the brokerage business you're always gonna have different scenarios that sometimes don't pan out the way you want, meaning the following. You may have a guy that calls you in the morning and says, hey Jay, you know what? We're not able to make it to the job today. I had a flat or something's wrong with my truck. Well, guess what? That one truck that you own, it's what I like to call for an emergency situation. Emergency situation, meaning you can call your driver and say, hey Joe, I need you to go to this job. And now you've covered yourself whenever that owner operator is not able to make it onto that job site. Overall guys, being a broker is not easy. You got to remember that you're going to be hiring owner operators. So you will be ultimately responsible for the logistics of the business, right? And one thing that I highly recommend is that you also remember you have to try to be consistent. Why? Because when you're consistent, what happens is the following, you're able to keep the guys that you hire busy, meaning it makes it a lot easier for you to always be in constant communication with them and again, build a relationship. Why? Ultimately, you want to keep the guys busy so when you need them, they're there. And of course, most importantly, guys, you wanna be able to also have them because when your contractors call you and they say, hey, I need five trucks or eight trucks or nine trucks, you have the owner operators, the guys that are working with you, there for you at that time without you having to scramble and call around and look for trucks at the last minute. And if you're wanting to become a broker, but still also wanting to own one truck or two trucks, I highly recommend you watch this video that I did it's called, Should I Buy a Truck Using Credit? If you found this valuable, like and subscribe, give us a thumbs up, 
See you on the next one.